Hey, hey developers, today we're gonna look at the state of JavaScript in 2018. So we're gonna look at this survey, we're gonna look at some of the more interesting points and maybe some things that'll surprise you about JavaScript and what you should be learning as a web developer in 2018. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack developer. I do a ton of tutorials on Vue. I give you advice, a lot of cool stuff. So make sure you stay all the way to the end to learn all about this. And before we get too far, let's have a word from our sponsor. Guys, when you're building your own website, whether it's for yourself, your business, or a brand, one of the hardest things to do is to find that awesome domain name that is short, relevant, and most importantly, available. Well, thanks to dot tech domains, finding the perfect domain for your website is one less thing to worry about. Programmers, tech startups, and brands finally have a domain extension of their own. .tech perfectly encapsulates what you stand for and has excellent recall value, enabling you to stand out from the crowd. Brands like Intel, Viacom, even the world's biggest electronics show, CES, are using .tech domains. With the .tech domains Black Friday sale coming up, it's the perfect time to secure domain at 95% off. In fact, if you pre-register now, you can get an additional 10% off. So make sure you go to www.go.tech slash Eric or click in the description below to get your .tech domain now. It's a really great deal. Just click on that link in the description now. Thanks. All right, so this is the state of JavaScript in 2018. I'll put a link below if you guys are interested to get into the nitty gritty details. So there is these team of JavaScript survey maintainers, uh, Sasha Grief, Raphael Benit and Michael Rambo. I'm probably mispronouncing those names, but basically they've been doing this for the last three years and they collect uh, tons of surveys from JavaScript developers. And this time they collected 20,000 respondents and they ask them like what frameworks they like, what backend stuff they're using. And so this kind of gives a great idea of like what to expect, what are the popular trends in web development and, and especially for JavaScript developers in 2018. And Really, if you're a new developer, or even if you've been in the industry for a few years, this is a great uh, great survey to kind of just get an idea and a pulse of, of what's out there. So you can see here on the left-hand side, they kind of broke it down between demographics, connection, JavaScript flavors, front-end frameworks. So uh, I'm gonna, I went ahead and just pulled a few up here and we can uh, talk about it and I'll just riff through it here. So first, I think uh, one of the most interesting things is like what kind of JavaScript flavors are people using? So as JavaScript matures, developers are starting to look beyond its borders. One of the things that a lot of people are looking at is ES6. So ES6, uh, you can see they break down the survey of like used it, would use it again, heard of it, would like to learn, or never heard of it. So at this point that most people, most JavaScript web developers are using ES6 right now. If you don't know what that is, it's like the newest uh, JavaScript standard. Uh, ECMAScript standard is ES6, um, one of the newest ones. There's actually a newer one uh, in its works right now. But it looks like that is pretty much, uh, it's developed, it's it's uh, in use by a lot of people. It's already developed, I should say. And so for the last couple of years, ES6 has been the top result in like JavaScript flavors. But what's interesting is TypeScript is, is really uh, a good second place. So a lot of developers are using TypeScript, which is great. If you don't know what TypeScript is, it's a superset of JavaScript. Uh, it makes um, has actually types in it, which is hence part of the name of it, TypeScript. You can see here over 46% are using it. And I've seen TypeScript being used in React projects, in Vue projects, and of course it comes bundled in with Angular. Flow is a distant third, and then Reason, Elm, and script at the end. Uh, Reason, I haven't heard of Reason, but I looked it up. Reason basically lets you write fast and quality uh, quality type safe code, leveraging both type, with both JavaScript and OCaml. I heard it's actually backed by Facebook, so that might be something to look out for um, in the future. And I might do a tutorial in it in the future just to kind of learn myself. Uh, the this survey actually breaks down like how much money developers are making, how big the companies are, how many years of experience. So those are kind of interesting. Uh, one thing I want to show you is the uh, conclusion. So they have these nice graphs at the end of each one of these sections. So this kind of gives you an idea of what technologies you should probably adopt and, and work on and some things that you should kind of keep in the background. So of course, ES6, you should learn that if you're any sort of web developer. But TypeScript is a close second. 
and it's definitely in the adopt category here, which they call high usage, high satisfaction. And then everything else from Reason, Elm, Closure Script Flow, they're all in this assess, which is low usage, high satisfaction technology, so we're keeping an eye on. So they took all the survey results and kind of made this, this uh, satisfaction slash users graph, which is kind of very interesting. So a lot of people are using TypeScript and ES6, and it seems like the best bet right now. Another section I like to point out is the front-end framework section. So uh, no surprise, React is still, from these 20,000 developers they surveyed, is the number one on the results with 64% uh, saying they used it or use it again. Um, very few people say they would not use it again, and then 20% have heard of it and just haven't used it. What's cool is Vue.js for the last couple of years has, has been in the second spot. So you can see here, 28% have used it. Very few people haven't used it. And it's a good majority, almost 50% of people have heard of it, just haven't had time to use it. If you're, by the way, one of those people that have heard of it and want to use it, I have tons of tutorials on this channel in Vue.js. I also am the author of the Vue.js in action book, which you can find a link in the description below. So make sure you check out Vue.js. I think it's a really up and coming uh, framework still. Um, it has a huge user base and uh, people really like it. Angular is third. And what I find surprising about Angular is this big 33% used it, would not use again. So <laughs> it, it seems to me that uh, Lisa and the people that were surveyed for this, they uh, like Angular, but they uh, may have tried it at one time, but they wouldn't recommend it. And I think that's pretty surprising. So if you go into the details of the Angular, you can kind of see here, used it, would not use again. And that's a lot different from 2017, where it was only 9%, and now it's gone up to 33%. And the the most problems they had with it, they think it's bloated and complex and has a clumsy programming style, which uh, honestly, when at first glance, when you start working with a Angular project, an Angular 2 Plus project, and you're using the Angular CLI and you're creating something, it kind of has that feeling because you might not understand how dependency injection works. You might not understand like how TypeScript works because it's kind of built in. Uh, Angular also really promotes RxJS. So if you're not familiar with using that, that might be confusing. I think though, once you get the knack of how to use dependency injection, how to use services, which is awesome, you don't even need to use any kind of flux like patterns like Redux or in, in, in the Angular world, it's N NGRX. Um, once you kind of understand how to use that, it makes creating programs really, really easy. The directives are really simple to use too. So I think it just takes a little bit of time, but I, I certainly don't agree that it's super bloated and complex. But it's funny that a lot of people put that used, would not use again. In fact, uh, this uh, there's another YouTube channel called Angular Firebase. They did a video on this and they said that they think that the data is biased for React developers in this data set, and that's why Angular got beat up so much on here. In fact, if you go to the conclusions, they have React and Vue as in the adopt category with Vue kind of moving from the assess category to adopt, but they put Angular in the Ana, in the uh, avoid category. Actually, it's in the analyze category. So high usage, low satisfaction. <laughs> so it was kind of a hit on Angular on this, and they actually put Polymer and Ember. That's another one. I'm a big Ember fan, but it definitely has that stigma of uh, diminishing momentum, po uh, popularity, and clumsy programming style. So it, fortunately, it just it has a tried and true and amazing community. It just hasn't gotten the momentum as these other libraries. And it usually is another one that, or frameworks that is, it's usually the one that's always at the bottom of these graphs. So Ember is on the avoid section, low usage, low satisfaction, which is, I don't think it's necessarily true. I think it is low usage, but it's, once you get used to working with Ember, it's, it's very satis, it's, it has a lot of satisfaction. So backend frameworks, of course, this is focusing on JavaScript. So you're, you're not going to see uh, C Sharp, .NET, PHP, Rails, Ruby. Uh, so really, Express is really the number one JavaScript overall backend framework for JavaScript developers. Interesting is Next.js is number two. If, you don't, if you're not familiar with Next.js, that's like the React server-side rendered framework. It obviously doesn't have the power as, as Express does, but a lot of people have moved on the Next.js um, bandwagon. I will admit this whole survey is a little React biased. 
I, React is the most popular front end framework, but it seems like it it does have some um, maybe a little bit of bias that way. Koa's third, Meteor, Sales, and Feathers. Um, so if this is, if you are looking to be a full stack developer using ex, um, going to Express and the back end is great because then you're writing front end and back end code in JavaScript and Express as you can see here is definitely the most popular and has been for the last few years. So conclusions, they say, you know, it, Express is, is a great option. It has high usage, high satisfaction. Um, you could assess Koa, Next.js, and Feather.js, and then they say avoid Sales and Meteor. I haven't used Sales in forever, but I used to hear good things. The data layers. So this is another interesting one. Uh, Redux and GraphQL and Apollo. So I think GraphQL and Apollo really have definitely have gained a lot of popular, popularity right lately. Once again, Redux is really high. I think you could probably take Redux and put in Vuex and NGRX into the same data layer in the back end. But you might also think that you know Redux is highest because React is really the most popular in this survey. It's interesting how GraphQL and Apollo are moving up. So this is uh, something definitely to keep a look out on. If you look at their conclusions, they say adopt Redux, but GraphQL and Apollo are in that assess phase. So these definitely could be moved over to adopt phase. More and more um, people love working with GraphQL and Apollo. And I'm assuming next year, I think these are gonna be shifting more, more to the right as more and more users start using it and with higher satisfaction. So another thing we wanna look at is testing. Uh, Jest is, is really Jest, Mocha, Jasmine. It's actually kind of all over the place. That's really, really close between Jest and Mocha. Even Jasmine is, all three of these are really close, I think. Right now, you're good to go with whatever framework you're using and whatever they choose. If you're using Create React app and it has Jest or Angular, now you, you can use Jest too, but I think it's it defaults to Jasmine. Um, View, you can choose Jest or mm, Jasmine as well. I think you're fine with, with any three of these. And you can see in the conclusions, really, most people are happy with Jest, Mocha, Jasmine, Karma. I mean, they have tons and tons. Karma is your test runner. Tons and tons of people are using it, and most people are satisfied. So it's all over the place. It's not. There's no real conclusive winner, I don't think. And so here are the words that they came up with for this survey. So highest satisfaction, they put on Jest. Highest interest, GraphQL. I think if you're looking to get into web development or if you've been in the industry for a few years, looking at, starting to look into GraphQL and Apollo is not a bad idea. Most mentioned, Vuex. Uh, this is cool because this is a view... This is basically the way you do the store and view is Vue X. Most used, this is no no surprise. React is really the most used, but Express and Angular are, are right up there. Prediction award, reason. This Facebook team is too is too with React uh, GraphQL. So reason is the one I was thinking, talking to you guys about. Maybe it's something to look at, a different way of writing your JavaScript. And special award to VS Code. I think they actually had, I didn't include in here, but they have a... Uh, tools section and VS Code, once again, the number one. And by the way, Storybook's getting more and more interest too. That's some something I want to do a video on. All right, so guys, thank you for watching this video. This, and once again, I'll put a link to this survey. They did a great job of coming up with this. Uh, let me know if you agree. Is React the most popular framework out there? What do you think about Vue? And do you think Angular is getting a bad rap? you think it's that confusing? I want you guys to leave your comments below. I really appreciate it. And also, uh, I want to say that Black Friday is coming up very soon, and there's a lot of great deals. Um, in fact, Udemy is having some really cool Black Friday deals. I, I'm actually going to do some deals too, so um, just stay tuned. Make sure you guys uh, keep up with this channel. I'll be trying to do a video about every day. And uh, I'll be letting you guys know of some cool Black Friday deals um, that you guys can pick up. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you watch the channel. Click that like button. Click that subscribe button and the bell button. That really helps me. Thanks.